There's lots of different uh, surveys that have been done in recent years, perhaps a decade or so, on uh, experiences of racism, racial discrimination for Indigenous people in Australia, and uh, the, the prevalence of that uh, racism does vary quite a bit from around 30% uh, in nationally representative surveys, usually around that figure, to 90 plus percent uh, when we have longer, more detailed questions about those experiences, uh, usually in, in smaller scale surveys. So, and, and it is uh, often the case that of the different minority groups in Australia, Indigenous Australians are really up near the top of the prevalence of, of racism, of experiences. Uh, why that is? Well, I think basically it's to do with the history of colonisation in Australia and, and colonialism. So there's continues to be a lot of particular anxieties and fears that Australians have, um, specifically Anglo-Australians, uh, white Australians, about the place of Indigenous people in Australia. And there's a long history of, of racism against Indigenous people and the sort of stereotypes and beliefs and tensions that come up in terms of race relations from that history of 230 plus years is something that I think is very different from uh, the sort of histories of most migrant groups in Australia. And so, yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem. And uh, that weight of history creates that higher prevalence of experiences of various kinds of racism uh, for Indigenous people in Australia. Looking at the existing research, is there a, a, a difference between, um, for example, rural Australia and urban Australia in relation to discrimination to Indigenous people? Yes, uh, there is a tendency to have more racism in rural areas. Uh, that's something that we usually find in studies. Of course, when you go to very remote areas where most people who live there are Indigenous, you have also reduced levels of racism. But in rural areas, yeah, there's particular tensions there with, uh, with local histories, with ideas about uh, land rights, with access to resources and also relatively large proportions of Indigenous people live in remote rural areas so that, uh, so that Indigenous people are much more visible uh, and there's more potential for conflict I guess given the proportional size of the population compared to say urban areas like Melbourne where a lot of people in Melbourne would say you know they've never met an Aboriginal person for example not that they know of so it's very different in that sense. What are the different sets of causes of racism to Indigenous people? For me, racism is very emotive uh, in general. And so um, fears and anxieties about um, things like ownership and belonging to the country among white Australians in particular, uh, which feeds into ideas of land rights, a sense of, also of uh, more recently, in more recent de decades, there's a sense of Indigenous people uh, getting too much from the government. So this idea that there's benefits that are specific to Indigenous people that are in some sense undeserved um, creates also a sense of, of, of threat, you know, in some, in some form uh, in terms of resources. So there is a lot of that idea of who deserves and who doesn't deserve, but it's also alongside uh, other ideas of Aboriginal people as uh, uneducated and as uh, stupid and ignorant, um, primitive, uh, lots of uh, ideas about Aboriginal people as drug users and alcoholics, which create enormous problems, uh, particularly in the provision of healthcare. Racism in the provision of healthcare often takes the form of uh, staff at hospitals assuming that Aboriginal people are drug seeking or uh, drunk. So there is a, a sense of um, both long-standing stereotypes and uh, kind of fraught race relations to do with really the fact that um, Aboriginal people were here first and what does that mean for all of those who came after and their 
connections to the country. What other uh, types of discrimination and hate are Aboriginal people victims of? I guess a very uh, intense uh, form of racism is occurring also within legal and justice settings for Aboriginal people. So there's lots of evidence of police uh, racism against Aboriginal people, uh, ongoing deaths in custody are a very much tip of the iceberg form of that. But uh, certainly over-policing and racial profiling is a big issue for Aboriginal communities, so there's justice setting issues. There's lots of evidence of racism in educational settings, often uh, in the form of uh, implicit biases uh, that mean that Aboriginal people are not getting as much out of education, they're not expected to achieve as much, and those stereotypes, of course, are self-fulfilling um, in that way, in a lot of cases. In education in particular, but also more broadly, we have a sense of uh, what's called a deficit uh, discourse. So the idea that Aboriginal people are disadvantaged and uh, fundamentally sort of impoverished in a certain way uh, means that we never get a chance to celebrate the strengths of Aboriginal culture, or not as much as we should. Um, so there's the, recently that's been a, a focus of anti-racism work is uh, how can we understand and celebrate strengths while recognising the ongoing impacts of racism so that we're not reinforcing a sense of Aboriginal people as fundamentally and always uh, disadvantaged and kind of behind everybody else. There's lots of evidence of racism in public places, so just generally kind of uh, exclusion, uh, name-calling, racial abuse occurs often. Uh, and from, from very, uh, looking at it from a, a life course perspective, these things happen from a very early age. So there's evidence of uh, negative stereotypes against Aboriginal children from, from kindergarten onwards. Yeah, so, uh, and parenting that reinforces negative, negative uh, ideas and views about Aboriginal people that then affects kids in racially diverse schools, Aboriginal kids in racially diverse schools throughout their education. Yeah, so there's any sphere of life that you can name, there'll be some form of racism happening against Aboriginal people. And those are the main ones that we usually assess in surveys, public places, public transport, education, justice, service provision as well from various sources and the way that people are um, given inferior service or not served um, uh, in different settings, whether it's retail or government provision of services. Yeah, many examples there as well. What are the consequences uh, on victims of all these contexts of continuous discrimination? Well, we see some fairly stark consequences. For example, uh, about a third of all uh, people imprisoned in Australia are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. So, given that only about 3% of the population uh, is Indigenous, there's, a, there's an example right there. We also know that about a third of people in Australia who are homeless are Aboriginal. So very significant disadvantages occur, uh, I would say, primarily as a result of these processes of racism. Uh, that would be my view of the strongest driver of disadvantage for Indigenous communities. We see a lot of disparities in educational outcomes. We also see um, higher levels of unemployment. I didn't mention before employment, but obviously seeking jobs and keeping jobs and being promoted in jobs is a place where a lot of racism occurs uh, for Indigenous people. So all of the kind of social factors that influence our life chances, our life outcomes, work, education, ability to navigate public spaces safely without stress, uh, contact with uh, police and being criminalised, uh, ability to seek health care. All of these things mean that people have shorter life expectancies. You know, we know that Aboriginal people have about a decade less of life than on average than other Australians. This is the, the kind of uh, the end effect of, of, of these racism um, 
phenomenon of racism across different sectors of life. So much worse health outcomes, including higher levels of mortality and lower life expectancy. And just generally um, a life that is not as easy to navigate as for others. A lot of levels, a lot of high levels of stress. Uh, and also then, of course, it creates uh, experiences of racism within Aboriginal communities. So these pressures of colonisation, these pressures of these stereotypes, these negative deficit views, end up creating additional conflicts within communities who then become um, and sometimes discriminate against each other on the basis of where they come from, whether they're a local traditional owner, uh, very significant impacts on identity uh, because of the the broader Australian discourse on uh, of authenticity. Who was the real Aboriginal person is something that comes up a lot. That's another very significant form of racism for people like myself, who are fair-skinned or light-skinned Aboriginal people. Uh, we have to justify our Aboriginality. We have to perform a certain types of, uh, of culture to be considered Aboriginal in the broader community. And this kind of... Um, conflict over identity and authenticity makes its way into communities as well and that creates once again other forms of, of racism and discrimination that have their own stress uh, and forms of exclusion uh, which are very uh, detrimental to health, mental health as well.